many eons ago, back in the distant year of 2018, I made a little promise. I promised that I was going to play Room Factory 4 with this, my 3DS with recording capabilities, but partly through the project, it broke. I, I tried to get it fixed, it couldn't be fixed. I, I was gonna buy a new one, but the guy who made them has since moved on. My promise, it went up in smoke. But then the Nintendo Switch became one of the best selling systems of all time, and every developer under their noonday sun just transfer all their games to it. We have everything from Xbox One games to Sega Genesis games. So naturally, Room Factory 4 was slated for announcement, so now I can fulfill my promise. Now, I bought the Archival Edition. Is that because I'm a huge fan of Room Factory? No, no, not really. Was it for the art book? No, I, I, I can't say it was that. Was it for the CD? No, actually this will be very useful for editing. But no, there's only one reason I bought this. <laughs> Let's review the game. Room Factory 4. So, Room Factory is a spin-off of the Harvest Moon series. So, throughout this review, expect a fair amount of comparisons to... Stardew Valley. So, the story of Room Factory 4 takes place above the skies, and I'm taking a THING to a place, when suddenly we're attacked by a soldier and a gangster soldier, whatever a gangster soldier is. I quickly dispatch the two of them, and then I turn my back on them, and then one of them conks me in the back of the skull piece. Never start with the head, the victim gets all fuzzy. And I did get fuzzy! So fuzzy, in fact, I, I don't know who I am, I don't know who these guys are, they're here for the thing, but I don't even know what the thing is anymore! And so they decide to yeet me off the ship. YEET! Right into the Dragon Queen's head! At this point, I'm mistaken for a prince who was supposed to arrive in this town today. A prince arrived in our town today. He came to the war from the freaking sky! Yeah, okay, so whatever. They prepare the royal chambers for me, let me sleep, and when I wake up, it's time for farm labor. Come on, if you're gonna stay, you're gonna work. Yep, apparently in these parts, prince means gosh dang farmhand. Doesn't really seem like the right way to treat a prince, but when it says a fantasy harvest moon on the box, I kind of knew what I was getting myself into. So how is the farming in this game? For the most part, it's pretty good. You can take care of your crops in a reasonable amount of time. My only big complaint is that I never really upgraded my farm tools that much. This game has like a billion things for you to level up, and I didn't really focus on the tool thing. I did not feel like making a ton of tools that I didn't really need. Yes, my RuneScape days are behind me. Building 50 steel watering cans so I can make one gold one is not on my priority list. But even that steel watering can made tending my fields a breeze. After doing my strenuous work of planting and watering one turnip, they have me talk to the Dragon Queen again. And my next royal duty is to introduce myself to the town folks. And uh, real talk, um, these are some of the best characters of all times. No flanderization. All of them are very memorable. And there's Porkaline. I love you. Poor girl! Then we're off to our wondrous wedding ceremony! Just kidding. Okay. After the introductions are out of the way, I go back to Venezuela, and then the real prince comes in. Prince Arthur! We explain the mix up to him, and he says, Sounds good to me! You do that! I'm gonna go back to my room and read a bunch of manga! Have fun with the farm work, slave! So now I'm the prince, and this game is kinda of smart on how it doles out its tutorials. So there's this thing named Eliza that gives you all these requests. You can only do like one or two per day so you don't get overloaded with this game's many systems. Of course, as I mentioned, I didn't dabble too much in crafting accessories and tools. But the very first request was to go into the order thing, which is actually pretty important. Arthur explains that by using this currency called Prince Points, you can do a variety of princely things. Get some new festivals, more farming space, just a bunch of stuff to give you goals to work towards. It really does make you feel like a prince. Yo, I'm, uh, Arthur, buddy, uh, how many points am I going to need to enact Prima Nocta? 
after that, you're pretty much free to get more seeds, plant, meet more of the villagers. I went outside of the town, and then this night chick came up to me and explained, much like the old man in Zelda, that it's dangerous to go alone. And then she shoved a claymore into my hands. <gasps> my dream girl! Don't worry, defeating the monsters doesn't mean that you're killing them. The weapons and farm tools that we use have a magic spell called... ta me ta ya Cast upon them. This Tomatalia prevents our attacks from actually harming the monsters, instead sending them back to the Forest of Beginnings. Is, is that like what you call hell in this world? After this, I went out and tamagotchi a bunch of the monsters, and then I ran to this butterfly lady, and then she freaking tamagotchi me in one hit! Holy crap! Yeah, like, that's fair. And by the way, that, that should be the tagline for this game. There are so many times I was playing, and I just got pelted with so many attacks! That my health bar just melted. I, I'm frankly disappointed that the game was re-released with that intact. But I went back and quickly dispatched her, and it dropped a girl who I took back to the clinic. This is Amber. Once she wakes up, she is taken in by Illuminata to help her run the flower shop. And now's an okay time to mention that this is a Harvest Moon game. So naturally one of the things that you got to do in this game is get married. And I have to say, honestly, this game has one of the best selection of marriage candidates. Usually in a game like this, there's only one or two standouts. And honestly, it was a tough choice for me in this game. D it, 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 except for Amber. That's, that's gonna get you on an FBI list. Actually, while I'm talking about Amber and the fact that she was taken in by Illuminata, I got one thing I gotta yell about. WHY IN THE BLOOD SOAKED FORCE OF BEGINNINGS IS A Illuminata NOT A BACHELORETTE?! I don't see a ring! All I see is a babe with a monocle! You can't put a babe with a monocle into a game and then not let me marry her! Also, Full Cannon and Porgoline aren't candidates either! I am legitimately mad about this! Especially since later on there's this holiday where every single marriageable character wears a swimsuit, including Illuminata! She wears one! She wears one, but you can't marry her! This would have incentivized a lot of people to pick up this re-release game, but no! You can go ahead and marry a six-year-old girl, but not the babe with a monocle! The only thing sexier than a monocle is a top hat. And fortunately, somebody told me that one of the brides in this game has a top hat, so I guess that's okay, but I haven't saved her yet, so we're gonna have to play the game a little bit more. But the next person we need to save is in the ruins, and last time I played this game, I got instantly pulverized by the goblin. So this time, I'm going to get some help. I asked that night chick to go on an adventure with me. She agreed, and we went through the ruins, killing the goblins, getting the treasure, and eventually we go to the horse guy, and he kills me. So we go back, and he kills Forte, so I reset, and then we kill him. It was a lot of fun! One thing I want to mention is, Stardew Valley is better than this game in a lot of ways. But the combat is not one of them. It blows Stardew Valley out of the water! The combat is so good, dude! Tons of different weapon types, dash attack, combos. Obviously, this was a real focus in the game, and it works good! It works real good! There are so many weapon types, and it works beautifully. Also, at this point in the game, I got a monster barn, and almost every monster in this game can be tamed. I'd steer clear of everything besides chickens and cows, because they give you stuff you can use. Eggs and milks. Some of them give you nothing like this oddly sexy cat, and this mushroom guy gives you spores. What the frick am I supposed to do with spores? One exception would be the apple guy, because you can ride animals. For example, look at me riding on this cow. <laughs> Pretty majestic, right? Well, when you hop on the apple guy... They see me rolling, they hating, because I got an apple and they don't. And now it's time for a festival! Oh man, I love the festivals in Rune Factory 4! Almost all of them are fun little mini-games in one way or another. Sometimes it might just be catch the most fish in one day. Or maybe it's like grow a crop and then present it. Or it's the Bean Tossed Festival. Hoo-hoo, I got a bean! Oh, I caught another one! WHAT THE FORCE OF BEGINNINGS IS GOING ON?! Anyway, the next story beat is to go investigate a spooky mansion. Unfortunately, it's blocked off. But Volcan is the coolest dude of all time. He slams through this log, instantly builds up a bridge. He's like the video game equivalent of Major Armstrong, mustache and all. I'm just right over! You need the example of a perfect physical specimen to inspire your recovery. You see? But over the bridge there are monsters, so I bring Forte along. And even though she's afraid of ghosts, she braves it. She cuts them down. Also, like, what is with this mansion song? Like, they build up the atmosphere. Ghosts appearing, messages written in blood, but this cheery music? Man, it is just so cheerful! So we're jogging through the mansion and- WHOA FORTE! You 
fucking killed her, dude! And then we make it to the boss, which really does kill Forte! Kills me a couple of times, too! But by keeping my distance and utilizing my spells, we kill the boss, and now... Now we have that babe in a top hat I was talking about. But here's the thing, adventuring with Forte, seeing her face her fears and try her best, I, I think I might have accidentally fell for her. I don't know, I'll give gifts to both of them and see how this pans out. Now I talk to the dragon lady and she explains some stuff like there are the four dragon gods and basically she's dying. The people that I saved were keeping her alive, but she does not like the fact that her friends sacrificed themselves for her. Once I save them, they can go and live their own lives, and there's four of them. I've saved three of them. Once the fourth one is saved, she is toast. And let me be honest, my character is very unpragmatic. He won't let someone die. She's been alive for centuries. She's lived her time. He won't let her pass on. Anyway, as I go to bed that night, a gosh dang chipmunk steals my pendant from Venezuela. And I chase it to the forest and fall down into a chasm. The first time I fall, it's kind of like wildly coyote. But whenever I enter the chasm after that, oh man, it's, it's just an awesome entry. Anyway, pretty tough monsters down here. I level up a lot, I get hurt a lot, but eventually I make it through. And now I need to fight a tree boss. Come at me, Wispy Woods! You're nothing! You think you can kill me with apples? Come on, I can move around and you can- OH MY GOD, THE TREE CAN RUN! But I do beat it, and I get a special rock that can basically take the place of the people. But then Doug shows up. He explains that his entire village was massacred by Venezuela. He didn't see it personally, but I mean, the enemy kingdom told him that it totally happened. Okay, Doug, I'm not saying that your village wasn't massacred. It, 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 it probably was. But by, by, by Venezuela? Like, have you heard the names of the other dragons? They've got names like Fearsome, and Terrible, and Actually Satan. Now I'm tasked with getting the four rune stones, which I get by going to where I fought the original bosses and then just fighting harder bosses. But while this is happening, I'm growing crops, I'm giving gifts to Dulce and Forte, and they start giving gifts back. For example, once I gave Forte an omelette, and she gave me straight up gunpowder! She's one dynamite gal. And by the way, everything that's happened so far happened in just the first season of the game! Now we're to summer, but the first day of summer has a little holiday called Beach Day, where everyone goes down to the lake and sports a swimsuit. Only Dulce came. ONLY DULCE CAME! WHAT THE FRICK?! THIS IS ILLEGAL! THIS IS A CRIME! <laughs> I want it! I want it! I want it! I want it! I want it. <laughs> <laughs> By the princely powers invested in me, I declare summer to be Swimsuit Day! So let it be written. So let it be done. So I go, I do some boss fights, I get knocked the frick out. That, that wasn't cool. And eventually I get myself three of the rune stones. And so, with the stones in hand, I go and see Venezuela. But then Doug comes up to kill her, or at the very least confront her. He's confused, he's hurt, and honestly, there's a lot of emotion in this cutscene that's completely thrown out the window since everyone's in their swimsuit. Actually, the next cutscene suffers from this as well. Everyone gathers together and thinks how they can most help Venezuela. Actually, everyone has a theory on how they can gather some information. Except Borkaline. He's gonna go cook for everyone. But eventually we get something. Barte has a ring, a one-time use to escape from the Forest of Beginnings. This is precisely what I need. But first a hurricane hits! Holy cow, this should be scaled back! There is nothing you could do to prevent the destruction that comes with a hurricane! At this point in the game, I was feeling pretty good about myself. I was pulling in good profits, I had my plans all neatly organized in rows, and then this happened! Over 60% of my men blown to smithereens! I do not like how devastating this is. And I also don't like the buddy battle. It's the one festival where you have zero control over it. You basically just send in your best two animals and then, oh my gosh, Cow is just gonna sit back while the chicken gets violated in the corner. And once they're done with him, they turn their attention to Cow. Hey, what's with this? Four taking name or animals longer than six characters. Discovery and endeavor. Incinerated cells can't regenerate. Oh, no wonder I lost the first round. At 
after spending a fair amount of time repairing, I head to the Forest of the Beginnings to save Venti's friend Leon and place the final runestone. It was super fast, like three hours in-game time. They also have me kill enemies here, but we're in the Forest of Beginnings. There's no Tamagotchi spell. I'm not sending them to... Oh, shoot. I, I think I actually killed those guys. Eventually, I get to some fairly simple bosses. Big Egypt cats, and then, like, a sarcophagus boss, which saves Leon. But then he begins to float away. I only have one escape ring, and since I promised Fenty that I would save Leon no matter what, I lean back and chuck the escape route to him, dooming myself to the Force of Beginnings. And the credits roll. But then they stop! <laughs> yeah, screw the North American team, am I right? Ventus Will flies in and chews me out. Then she plucks me from the realm, we get out of the forest, and then the real credits roll. Oh my gosh, look, that's a lot of big names. <laughs> Come on, if you had a video game that Laura Bailey didn't have a voice in, does the game even exist? Oh shoot, she voiced Dulce? <laughs> Put a couple more points in the Dulce category. All right, well, we are nowhere near done. There are like three more story arcs, but summer's over, so I guess people can go back to wearing clothes. And then we're attacked by the Empire. They're called the... Mwah. That name certainly doesn't work as well in English. I won't go too in-depth with the secondary story. I'll definitely leave that to anyone who finds this game intriguing. <laughs> Speaking of intriguing, it's Fall 11th, Valentine's Day. Full Cannon says I should try and set up a date. Well, let's see if I can't get myself a girlfriend. Dulce? Sorry, but I have no intention going along with a joke made in such poor taste. <laughs> So don't joke about it, please, okay? No! <laughs> Poor guy! Tomorrow is Valentine's Day! It's a holiday where ladies give cookies to the gentlemen they favor! Now I expect them fresh from the oven, Chet! Okay. Woohoohoohoo! <laughs> this is the happiest day of my life! There's a vice versa holiday of this as well on the 24th, and once again I hooked Porcaline up with some cookies! Oh, are you proposing to me? No, not even wrong. Where the frick is the yes answer? The funniest thing is that while all these festivals are happening, the Empire is an airship hovering above the city. In game, it took weeks to beat this, but hey, we still in all the festivals. Chet, who got 173 votes? Congratulations. 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 Congratulations! 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 But then it was time to fight the biggest, baddest guy! It's Secret of Mana! It's Secret of Gosh Dang Mana! And then Venezuela dies or something, I guess. But the main goal of this game is to get marriage, so whatevs. I keep farming, I keep amassing a fortune. Oh my gosh, after you beat the second arc, you unlock some extra prince powers. Look at this, you can change your character model to any character in the game. You can be the girl character, you can be Dulce, you can be Dulce during swimsuit day, you can even be Volcanon. A, a, a game where you can play as a character with a mustache? Give this game a 10 out of 10, a, a 100 out of 10. Hey, Pull a pork line and give this game a 24,650 out of 10. Okay, so I'm getting pretty close to the end here, so I won't delve too much into the third arc since I didn't actually beat it. But for anyone who has played this, hey, isn't this enemy stupid? Oh, also, how about this room? For anyone who's stuck here, because honestly, this is one of the stupidest things observed by scientists in the known universe, what you gotta do is infuse your clothing with enough ice cream that you actually end up getting healed by fire attacks. Alright, back to the dating. In the end, I decided to go with Forte over Dulce. Mainly because Pico being near Dulce every minute of every day kind of creeps me out. And I watched both of their Another Stories. Dulce's is only about Pico, while Forte's is actually about going on a date with the player. Plus, look at that dress and that blushing. My heart is absolutely melting. Uh, yeah, it's melted. You got like five minutes tops. And I gotta say, this is another area where Stardew Valley doesn't win. There is a lot of focus on the dating in this game. You meet up, you go places, there's these adorable little interactions. A little bit of premarital handholding on the second date. Who 
Such impurity out of the confines of marriage! Thou art poof bound for the fiery pits of the force of beginnings! But yeah, I went on at least three dates, I got the big bed, and now all I need to do is watch the special forte cutscene where apparently she murders her brother! Alright, well now I propose we get the marriage, and guys, it is so sweet. And if I'm being 100% honest, I'm glad I didn't beat the game yet, because Venice will would have done the ceremony. But since she's not here, our union is officiated by Volcanon, and now I'm Volcanon! Come on, Apple, let's roll out! So, that is Room Factory 4. Not as good as Stardew Valley, but if you spent over 400 hours on that game, this is a more than welcome distraction. I spent 90 hours playing just this one, and I gotta say, it, they were all quality hours. This is a lot of fun. If you like the farming things, you got a little too much Stardew Valley, you can't go wrong with this. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope you subscribe, and I hope to see you in the Force Beginnings.